Assalamu alaikum. Um, so my name is Saika Naz. I'm a cognitive behaviour therapist. I, um, as Dr. Drani said, I work in Sheffield. I work in two mental health services. Uh, I work with people with common mental health problems, things like depression and different anxiety disorders, uh, OCD, panic attacks, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, health anxiety, social anxiety. So quite common problems. Um, I think often when we think about mental health, our mind jumps to being sectioned and psychosis. Um, and this is one of the reasons I do this work in terms of coming into the community, just to make people aware that there's a whole array of other sort of mental health problems, common mental health problems that we might all experience, um, and there's help available. So really today is just a whistle-top tour of um, stress and anxiety. Sheikh's done a lovely introduction, and what he's talked about isn't different to what I would talk about from a psychology perspective, to be honest with you. And actually, you've had an enhanced version because he's added the Islamic perspective to it as well. Um, what I'd like to do then really is actually build on what Sheikh's um, been talking about. So we've been talking about um, the internal and external triggers, but I'm going to introduce you to the basic cognitive behaviour therapy uh, cycle. And often this is what I would use when somebody comes into therapy and we start to get getting them used to thinking about their problem from more of a psychological perspective. And given the kind of time constraints, there's other interventions that we can use, but I thought if you can introduce you to the basic uh, CBT model and um, introduce you to um, a problem solving technique that often we use with people. So given the time that we've got, I thought that'd be uh, a better technique to share with you. And just thinking about thoughts and how they impact on us. So Sheikh's talked about having uh, negative thoughts, but then what are the impact of those thoughts on us? Um, and then looking at perhaps uh, healthier approaches to coping with stress. And then thinking about practical ways in which we can perhaps take the learning from today's session uh, away with us. Again, you know, if this was a full day workshop, we'd go through a lot more. But given the time that we've got, it's just to give you a bit of a, a taster, really. Um, and then think about what, what are the things that might get in the way of us looking after ourselves. And the slips that you've got um, here, okay, they've got information about what to do if you are struggling with your mood. Um, it's absolutely fine if you are, it's a normal part of the human experience. But we managed to get some local information as well for you. GP is often the best uh, point of contact in terms of further support. So I, I guess the terms uh, stress and anxiety are often used quite interchangeably. Um, worry and anxiety, stress. And so when I was thinking about this workshop, I was thinking, right, how can I kind of make sense of it? And for me, I think anxiety tends to linger where stress, that you, you get um, a stressful um, factor, uh, maybe pressure at work or there's a deadline to meet, you feel stressed, but once that deadline's gone, you kind of come down a bit. So if you like a bit where you have like this internal sort of pressure cooker, it builds up when the stress is gone, the factor, uh, it, it kind of reduces. Um, whereas anxiety, it lingers, even if you've, you've submitted your deadline, you know, you've submitted your work for your deadline or there's nothing particular happening in your life, but we have that feeling of being a bit uneasy and often people experience it as a, a physical experience and often here, that's where people refer to kind of be somatized, we kind of say we feel it in our chest or in our stomachs. Um, so that's how I make sense of it, but in terms of our sort of uh, evening here, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, so I guess as human beings, we always think of us as, as on a, a continuum, so some of us worry a lot, some of us don't really worry at all. So you, if you think about the people in your lives, friends, family, colleagues, we're all, we're all on this continuum here, we're all very different. Okay, and, and that's okay. okay. So one of the things that I try to do in my work is get people to think a bit more flexibly. Okay, we're not black and white, we're not too rigid, it's thinking about, kind of thinking of a continuum, where are we on that continuum? And it's, it's good for you to have an understanding of, of yourselves, because you know, once you have an understanding and awareness of yourself, you can really use some of these techniques in CBT. So perhaps if, if you sat with somebody, perhaps thinking about how might we know when somebody's stressed or anxious. So we use these terms, don't we? You know, I'm feeling depressed or feeling stressed and anxious, but actually, how do we know what, when we're feeling stressed or anxious? So maybe just having a minute, maybe just to talk to the person next to you. Do you guys just want to shout out um, some of the answers then? And Dr. Drani will kindly jot some notes down here. There's no right or wrong answer, by the way, just to make it a little bit more interactive, I guess. Irritable. Irritable, okay, yeah. 
not sleeping properly, yeah? Sorry? Headaches, yeah? Not coping? Meltdown, okay. Sweaty? Moody? Changing breathing. Is that okay? Is that pace okay for you? Yeah. Okay. I don't know who you're saying. Okay, yeah. Changing eating habits. Physical pains, yeah. Acting out of character. Okay. Avoidance. Lack of concentration, yeah. Snappy, Snappy yeah. That goes over there. Self harming, yeah. I can't. Low, low mood, yeah. Overthinking, yeah. I think I need to sit down and you guys could take over. <laughs> So hopefully some of the things that I'm sharing with you today, actually, you'll think, oh, I haven't learned much, actually, or it's just connecting the dots sometimes. So as you can see, stress affects us in lots of different ways, and it affects us differently. It just depends on individuals. So if you come back, again, coming back to that uh, continuum or where we might be, it might just affect us differently. So keeping that in our minds. <clears throat> So I guess, so now that we know what can, um, when we know when we're stressed, what are some of the things that can cause us stress? Just shout them out. Life. 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 <laughs> Look. There you, there you go, she summed it up. <laughs> yeah, generally just everyday sort of life situations. It doesn't have to be this one big um, event in our lives, it can be accumulation, lots of different things in our lives. Um, so, June Shakes talked about bullying, uh, relocating, exam stress, hormones, you know, um, DIY, parents splitting up, finances, we're getting a lot of that at the minute, um, bereavement, puberty, so where, I guess where you are in terms of your developmental stages, expectations of yourself, expectations others have of you. Um, friends, car breaking down, communities, you know, especially like in Asian communities, isn't there? There's a lot of pressure on us, isn't there? To, to be a certain way or live a certain life. Uh, and then when we don't do it, we don't conform. That can, you know, make us the outcast, can't it? So lot, lots of different uh, situations. And I guess, yeah, just, this is just about it. Actually, when we see people often, and you take a timeline of events, um, and often it's lots of different things that have happened over the years and it just so happens and the, this latest event has triggered it all off for them but actually it's been building up for a while. Okay. So here's a scenario for you. you. You've been on holiday and you're in the queue getting ready to board the plane back home and you realise your passport is not in your bag and you only have 20 euros on you, and you're traveling on your own. Okay. So you can do this on your own, or you can again do it with the person next to you. And um, just think about, maybe just on your phone, on a piece of paper, write down what thoughts you would have in this situation, that's A. B, how you would feel. So in this particular, what I mean is your mood, happy, sad, angry, scared, okay? And how you're physically feeling and what might you do in this situation. So this, this actually happened to me. This is where this... <laughs> Slightly exaggerated because I wasn't on my own, but I, yeah, it happened to me last week. Okay, so the situation is... And do you know, if you were to attend therapy, the therapist might ask you, actually, can you give me a recent example of when you felt a bit low or when you felt a bit anxious? and then they will talk you through this example. 
And quite often, this is the way in which they will then lay it out for us. So the thoughts went something like, OMG, where has it gone? I'm going to miss the flight. And actually, I was at the, towards the front end of the queue as well. Okay. Feeling slightly panicky. It was the last uh, flight of the evening, and I had work the next day. And what did I do? I ran back to the shops to look for it. So hopefully by now, you've got something, maybe not the, the content might be different, that's absolutely fine, but you've got yours written out in this way, yeah? Okay, so we've got a situation where I lose my passport, I have certain thoughts in that situation, which make me feel panicky, my body's responding because I'm feeling panicky. And then based on what I'm thinking, I'm feeling, I'm responding in terms of my behaviours. So I went back to the other gate, ran around to the couple of shops where I um, bought some food and asked for the passport. Yeah? In therapy, you could take you know, five, six, seven, eight sessions just creating the links. Hey, I'm just trying to kind of give you information today. So when we're in a situation, we interpret the situation, yeah? There's different ways in which we think, which I'll come on to, which then affect how we feel in our mood and our bodies. And if you think about the different moods that we experience, happy, sad, angry, irritable, our bodies are responding differently. Okay. So if you, again, if you start becoming a little bit more tuned into yourselves, you will notice this, okay? And that then impacts on what we do and what we don't do. Yeah? Any questions on this? Okay. And sometimes, not always, our behaviours feed back, because I didn't find my passport, so the panicky mood increased. And I think we had about 15, 20 minutes before the plane left. And those thoughts continued. Okay? So sometimes the way in which we respond affects how we feel physically, our mood, and then reinforces the thoughts. And then it comes back down again. And when people come to us in therapy, often they're stuck in a cycle, a bit like this. And the whole idea of CBT or any therapy is to how do we get out of this cycle? When we're feeling stuck in life, how do we get out of it? So I'm going to introduce you to the um, problem-solving technique. And when we worry, when we're anxious, there's things happening in life, stressful situations. Often we get tangled up in all of this, and it kind of, again, we then get stuck in this cycle. So one of the things that we can do is problem-solve. And I would put that here. Yeah? So thinking about some of the behaviours then we've got here, what did we have? Um, avoidance, changing eating habits can be seen as a physical or a behaviour, uh, not speaking, um, changing your character, self-harming. Okay, and that's because we feel a bit stuck, we don't know how to get out of that situation. And it's a normal reaction sometimes, so with the problem solving technique, you identify what the problem is. So in this case, lost the passport. Okay, so uh, maybe just a couple of minutes, maybe if you want to work through this situation for yourselves, thinking about all the possible solutions. 
Okay, so one is, the problem is lost passport. Speak to someone, yeah? Stop the plane. Anything else? Yeah. Anything else? Lost and found, yeah. Could I have asked the other passengers in the queue for some money to get me home eventually? Possibly, we might, we might not pick it, but at this moment in time, remember, we're just throwing the ideas out, even if they seem a bit unrealistic. Okay. And then what we would do the third step is, we would list the pros and cons of each of these options. So what would the pros be of speaking to someone at the airport? Okay. Would there be any cons to this, asking somebody at the airport for help? They, they might not know, yeah? Um, stop the plane? Any pros to that? Yeah. So is that a, so they all stay with me? Is that a pro or a con? Maybe a pro for me and con for them. I'm not alone. Yeah. Okay. Any cons to delaying the plane or stopping the plane? Sorry. Okay. Phoning a family member or a friend. So, um, what could the pros be here? Okay, yeah. So, sharing panic. Okay. Okay, yeah, my mother would confiscate the passport and I forgot to the other side. <laughs> okay, um, any, any cons to phoning a family member or a friend? Yeah. Yes. Should have is a thinking style. Okay, going to lost and found. So the pros of uh, going to lost and found. Might find it, yeah. Might not find it. Waste your time, yeah. Precious time. Start cursing, any pros to that? <laughs> Again, it kind of relieves a little bit of pressure, doesn't it? <laughs> any cons? Are you going to find the passport? Yeah, people aren't really going to take their time to see you when They won't stay back for me with them, will they? No. Okay. And this last one. Ask others for money. Any pros to that? Yeah. And you never have to return it because you don't know where they live. <laughs> And if they can give me the money, I can get the next flight maybe home. Any cons to that? Okay. But will I get my passport though? I'll get a flight, but I won't have my passport.
So we've got a problem, listing possible solutions, pros and cons of each solution, and then what we do is we pick the most realistic solution here. Okay? When there's a problem, often we have an ideal solution in mind, and it's not always realistic. Doing this brings us back to the most realistic solution. So then looking at this then, these options here, what would be a good solution? Speak to someone? Okay. Yeah? And then lost and found. So sometimes you can pick one or two possible solutions. You don't have to just have one. You can, so what I could have done was speak to somebody, lost and found, or go to lost and found first maybe, and then from there speak to somebody. In that moment in time, it had to kind of be implemented in the next sort of minute or so. I just have to get on with it. But if this is a slightly sort of ongoing problem, then you might think, right, do you know what? Next week I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. So you plan it in advance, yeah? But the more practice you get, the quicker you can do this in situations. Um, so, so what did I do? I ran out of the queue, went back to the other gates, looking for the passport. Um, then I went to a police officer and I said, you just got to help me. If I stay back, you're going to have to help me. And I kind of <laughs> passed it on. <laughs> I was like, it's not my responsibility anymore. I'm your responsibility. I kind of, because <laughs> I thought, what can I do? I can't remember my uh, travel insurance information. Uh, my sister's kids, you know, she needed to get back to her kids. So I was like, you need to leave. I'm going to stay back and these strangers are going to help me. And actually what happened was somebody had had passed it back to you know, where I'd left the queue, where, I, where I'd been sat, that's where I dropped it. But had I not been panicking, had I done what you've said, I would have looked where I, the place I was sitting. That would have been the sensible thing to do. But my mind jumped and I ran off. And my sisters weren't happy because then we had to put our hand luggage in the hold. And, yeah, she has OCD, so she doesn't like dust. Um, so, so yeah, so we, so if you, I'm going to come back to this then, problem solve, get help, had I done, had I done that, I would have found my passport and then would have alleviated the panic, the heart rate would have just come down a bit, it's probably still sort of lingering sweaty and dry mouth, because physically I've you know, been charged up, um, and then the thoughts went away, yeah? Any questions? No. So what we've done so far is we've introduced you to the basic CBT cycle, helping you link the way we think to how we feel and what we do and what we don't do. Yeah. So avoidance behaviours, for example. So one of the techniques I've introduced you to is the problem-solving technique. And if it doesn't work, you come back to the drawing board. Okay. And come up with a different solution. It's okay. Okay, so just continue with problem solving. So thinking about us being sensitive to worrying. So some of us, are, you know, if you think about pollen, some of us react to it, others don't react to it. And that's what worrying is a bit like. You know, some of us are a little bit more sensitive to it than others. And there's two types of worries. So there's the real worries, which is my passport being lost was a real problem, wasn't it? So that was a real worry. I potentially could have missed the plane. Okay, um, and then from the real worries, we also have hypothetical worries. The problem solving technique is really good to help us with uh, real worries. You can't really solve a hypothetical situation. You can't solve a problem until it happens. You can worry about it for five years, six years. And we have a, you know, people who do spend you know, years and years of worrying about hypothetical situations and doing things to prevent them from happening, and then they get stuck. Okay, so just know when you're worrying about something, is it real or is it hypothetical? And sometimes the real problems do lead on to hypothetical worries. So from here, I guess my hypothetical worry might have been, um, I don't know, I'm going to get told off by my manager tomorrow for being careless. When I get back to work, I've got a new patient booked in. So my, those thoughts were kind of thinking ahead a bit. Um, and with hypothetical problems, it's learning to sit with anxiety. So do you know what we talked about here? some of these physical symptoms that you know, we might experience when we're feeling stressed, uh, stressed or anxious. Um, it's actually just learning to sit with them. And again, you know, if, you, if this is something that we struggle with, you can have CBT is really good for working on this. Um, and that's for you guys to remember to do the cooking. No, joking. 
So thoughts, we touched on thoughts, thoughts have, we have different layers in terms of our thoughts. The, the ones in everyday sort of situations are what we might refer to as the negative automatic thoughts. They come, they like this, they're automatic. Okay, and the thought changing technique, which maybe I could come back a different time and show you, is how to deal with those uh, thought changing, um, uh, with those thoughts. And th then there's those deeper cognition, you know, coming back to attachment and the way we've been raised, those early experiences, uh, how we might see ourselves, low self esteem, all those sort of things, those sort of deeper thoughts. Okay, so yeah, in terms of thought challenging, we, we just you know, look at facts. Are we, are we thinking based upon how we're feeling or actually is it a fact? So if I was sat at the airport with the passport in my bag, where, you know, I'm going to lose my passport, is, is that just because I'm a little bit anxious? Because it's not happened yet. Okay, do you know, fight and fly, uh, Sheikh touched upon this. Again, if, you know, a lot of people are usually familiar with their uh, different uh, Emotion states will elicit a different physical response. Again, here, look, needing the toilet, uh, pain, breathing changes, sweating, you know, lots of headaches, crying. So one of the things that we might be able, it might do to help ourselves is sort of self-soothe. Again, she touched on this, you know, with the lady asking her to put the music on. Uh, and go, go sit somewhere in the grass. So thinking about your senses, sight, smell, sound, touch, taste, you know, pleasant things. And it won't necessarily solve the problem, but it just brings us down a little bit. And then that might help us with a uh, problem solving technique or how we might respond, uh, respond sorry, to that stressful situation. Again, we touched on these, haven't we, in terms of the behaviours that we might use. Very common even in the Muslim community, especially amongst our youth in terms of how we're managing, so coming back to here. I think there's a, a lot of young, young Muslim boys that are kind of end up mentoring in the community sometimes, and you know, cannabis is quite popular. For some of us, it's this, irritable. See, so you all know this stuff, and it's again coming back to connecting the dots up. Okay, we've touched on self-harming, and yeah, just, thinking about other ways of behaving. So I've shown you a practical technique in terms of what we might do in a stressful situation. But generally, lifestyle, again, she touched on this, thinking about our lifestyle, we're leading very stressful lives, lots of demands are placed upon us, and how do we keep that balance? And I guess that's what this is about. During the scales, we can tip either way, and sometimes it doesn't take as much to tip one way or the other. Low mood or getting anxious, how do we try and stay in the middle? meditating, um, talking to people, whether it's friends, if you feel like you can't share your feelings, write them down. I say to people, write them down and then burn that piece of paper, or rip it up, and nobody will ever see it, but at least then you're sharing it. And sometimes people like writing journals. So yeah, lots of different sort of physical um, benefits to exercising, walking, meditating, praying, in terms of improving some of these physical symptoms that we've talked about here. And again, coming back to what Sheikh said, we all stress, it's a normal human reaction to different triggers and we all need it. So perhaps just thinking about one or two things that you can take from today's session, practical things that you can take for you, maybe your family, or your friends, um, and not feel guilty about prioritizing yourself. Um, thinking about what might get in the way and then using the problem solving technique to help you manage it. And so it's a very, very practical technique. So you use it, you practice, you review, and then you use it again. And you know, um, I should be better at kind of doing it, but at that moment in time at the airport, I was thinking about the person I'd booked in the next day. So kind of reining ourselves back in, our thoughts back in. Um, and then, yeah, just mindful of how you speak to yourself, because I just use a should against myself. I should do this, I must do this, I could have done this. So thinking about how it might um, affect us. And yeah, so CBT, how it's structured, I guess it's, it's a bit like this, where it's a bit of a funnel approach when you first access CBT, it's very broad, lots of information gathering, a bit of timeline, and then we start to formulate, so a bit of this happens, we start to make those connections. It happens throughout therapy, what do you want to achieve, want to get back to work, want to be able to leave the house on my own, 
uh, want to be able to get a job, want to go to a training course. And then we, we have the interventions and then you, you end care. And the idea is that you, you're equipped with te practical techniques to carry on uh, looking after yourself. So it's just more tools in your toolbox. Yeah? So if you were a plumber and there was a leak and you had one tool, it'd be a bit more difficult to fix the leak because it might not work. But if you've got more tools on you, then you can change them, can't you? So hopefully, just to round off, what we've done is a bit of a quick introduction, um, introduce you to the basic CBT cycle, the problem solving technique, kind of just race through some of the other stuff, but Sheikh had already covered some of that stuff. So he's thinking about lifestyle changes, what, you know, what are the lives that we're leading and how can we eat well, giving yourselves time to at least eat well and get your sleep regulated, um, and think about things that might get in the way and problem solving them. Is that all right? Is that okay?